I'm Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech News for Wednesday, September 23, 2015. Martin Winklecorn resigned his post as CEO of Volkswagen today. He said he takes responsibility for the emissions cheating scandal that has gravely damaged the carmaker's reputation and will likely spread to the German economy. He's been the CEO since 2007 and has also insisted that he personally committed no misconduct, stating, I am not aware of any wrongdoing on my part. Volkswagen shares are down 25% since the company admitted that some diesel cars in the United States contain software designed to evade emissions tests. 11 million cars worldwide contain the software, but the company has not yet clarified whether it was also used to deceive regulators in other countries. Chinese President Xi Jinping is in Seattle today, where he took part in a roundtable discussion with such prominent American business persons as Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, and chief executives of General Motors, Apple, Disney, and PepsiCo. These American companies are very, very happy to be doing business in China. Yesterday, President Xi pledged in a speech that he will work with the U.S. to fight cybercrime, saying the Chinese government is staunch defender of cybersecurity. That's good, because today the U.S. Office of Personnel Management stated that the hackers, believed to be in China, who stole security dossiers from the agency, also got the fingerprints of 5.6 million federal employees. Earlier, that agency had said it lost only 1.1 million sets of fingerprints among the 22 million individuals whose records were compromised. When refugee quotas were initially introduced to the EU in May, almost all of the former communist states of Central and Eastern Europe fought the idea on the basis that it was an attack on their sovereignty. Today, heated debate in the region has led to reluctant acquiescence. Poland, the Czech Republic, and Romania have agreed to go along with the plan, though they hope it won't be carried out. Pope Francis arrived in Washington, D.C. in a fiat rather than a limousine. He later rode in his open-air Pope Mobile through a crowd of 11,000 people, much to the dismay of the Secret Service, who are charged with protecting him during his visit. Speaking in English at the White House and later Italian to the leaders of the Catholic Church, the Pope began his six-day stay praising the country's devotion to freedom of liberty and religion, while cautioning that the country's vast resources demand a deep sense of moral responsibility. He's already quietly but forcefully made his priorities clear, tackling government, uh, excuse me, global, global poverty, confronting climate change, caring for immigrants, and providing a welcoming church that is pastoral rather than doctrinaire. President Obama welcomed the leader of the Roman Church with a fanfare of trumpets, then praised his moral authority that, quote, comes not just through words but also through deeds. Pope Francis somehow manages to dance on a very thin line, exhibiting and preaching love and acceptance for those involved in divorce, abortion, and homosexuality, while not suggesting that the church approve of any of these. Divorce, abortion, and homosexuality. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Donna Blanchard, Think Tech News.